Yo, 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 Cole Beeler here talking about how standard precautions are the golden girls for infection prevention in this month's Viper. We all know that multidrug resistant organisms require gowning and gloving and contact isolation. We know that respiratory viruses require masks and droplet isolation. We know that C. diff requires contact isolation, but also requires soap and water to fully reduce transmission. And we freak out about this stuff because we don't want to take infections home to our families or spread it to our patients or get sick ourselves. But as soon as someone doesn't have a sign on the door, we treat it like there's nothing to be worried about, like there is no need for caution. If there isn't a sign on the door, I don't really need to do anything. I mean, there isn't even a sign. If they wanted me to do something, they'd put a sign on the door. But we all know in our heart of hearts that this isn't the best practice. We see infections getting spread between our patients on a daily basis, but we assume that it's not our fault. I mean, there wasn't a freaking sign on, this, on the door. The golden rule of infection prevention, something I would consider to be common sense, is really based on three premises. One, I don't know what you've got. Two, you don't know what you've got. And three, whatever you got is likely infectious. So altogether, the golden rule of infection prevention is that everyone is infectious at all times, in all circumstances. You may say, you've got a good immune system, you've never gotten sick from patients, you take showers and bleach when you get home, but when it comes right down to it, you have just as much probability of contaminating yourself and other patients as everyone else. We are all colonized with the flora of the hospital over time, unless we take some simple precautions. There are a number of evidence-based strategies to protect our patients from hospital-acquired infections. We talk a lot about adherence to device bundles, antibiotic stewardship, device utilization, diagnostic stewardship, etc., etc. But the process underlying all of these is related to our golden rule and has a golden example. To me, these standard precautions are the golden girls of infection prevention. Why the golden girls, you ask? The Golden Girls was the foundational American sitcom, and in my opinion, based on fact, most successful sitcoms harken back to this story of four women in the prime of their lives, just trying to figure out how to live together. And Standard Precautions is equally foundational and guides us on how we should try to live together in the hospital environment. Plus, I just really freaking love the Golden Girls, and I'm going to make an argument moving forward that each of these beloved characters is an archetype for an aspect of standard precautions. Buckle up, here we go. For instance, I feel like Dorothy Zbornak is hand hygiene. She's the leader of the pack and has a complex history and multifaceted personality. She's really the soul of the Golden Girls and allows all the other aspects of the show to function effectively. I also like this because, like hand hygiene auditors, she's always watching Wazowski. Always watching. Remember, hand hygiene has more data than anything else we do in infection prevention. Practicing the WHA WHO five moments of hand hygiene, even when you're inside a patient's room, is crucial for prevention of disease transmission. Blanche Devereaux is kind of dirty on the Golden Girls and has many gentlemen callers, and that's why she's environmental cleaning. It's not just the responsibility of environmental services, it's all our responsibilities to keep a patient care area clean. Regular cleaning and sh of shared equipment, clean transfer of contaminated linens, appropriate disposal of different waste products, and even just making sure that dust isn't accumulating that can harbor bacteria are all important processes here. Elimination of colonizing bacteria from the environment is key to assuring our patients don't contract infections from the hospital itself. Rose Nyland grew up in a small farming village and was pretty sheltered, but now has really no barriers for telling odd and inappropriate stories, and because of that, she's barrier precautions. Many assume that lack of signage means a lack of need to wear gowns, gloves, masks, and face shields. But if we apply the golden rule and assume everyone is infectious, certain care activities would actually benefit from the use of personal protective equipment, even despite the lack of signage. If you're cleaning up blood or stool, you're going to wear gloves. If you're aerosolizing body fluids, you're going to wear a mask to protect your face and your eyes. Even just covering your nose and mouth when you sneeze is a barrier strategy to prevent the spread of infections. This is all common sense, but only gets used intermittently. If it's going to be cold outside, you bundle up. If something looks gross, protect yourself from getting into it. Sophia Petrillo is obviously 
everyone's favorite character and known for her trollery. But she does have a prickly personality at times, and as such, she's the sharp object protection. Making sure that anything sharp goes into its proper bin is crucial to protecting ourselves, our patients, and other healthcare workers against bloodborne pathogens. Don't rush. Don't recap. Don't forget, sharp sticks happen all the time and are avoidable. So taken all together, hand hygiene, environmental cleaning, appropriate barrier precautions, and standard and sharp object protection are the golden elements of standard precautions. But this has to be a team sport. Like herd immunity, a few bad grapes can spoil the wine, and we need to help keep each other accountable. Remember that at the center of these standard precautions is the patient. The hospital is a microbiologically hostile environment, and we need to remember these precautions to put a protective bubble around our patients who are at risk for these infections. Like the Golden Girls, these strategies work best together, and even a small chink in the armor can lead, uh, in, lead to a potentially fatal infection. Do you have questions about standard precautions? Are you interested in more information? Are you sick of my loose associations related to an unhealthy relationship with the Golden Girls? Don't hesitate to contact me. And thank you for being a friend.